In a world where football giants dominate the headlines, there's a story of an underdog that once defied the odds and etched its name into history. How did a club from a tumultuous region rise to become champions of Europe and what challenges did they overcome along the way? Journey with us as we dive into the inspiring and a captivating tale of Red Star Belgrade, the Serbian powerhouse that shook the football world and emerged victorious on the grandest stage of them all. Red Star Belgrade are flying high at the top of the Serbian league, around 20 points clear in fact. Another title is all but sewn up. The red side of Belgrade have already won 33 Serbian league titles, with their fierce cross city rivals Partizan lagging a bit behind in second with just 27. Oh, and they have won the last five titles in a row. In Europe, Red Star Belgrade have a long history, some of their tales better than others. Now, they may be seen as any old Eastern European team struggling to get out of the odd group phase, but historically that couldn't be further from the truth. Red Star Belgrade for one are part of the elite group of teams that have won the European Cup, and they have racked up 70 wins from 151 European Cup games over the years. Historically, Red Star have made it to the quarter-final stage five times and thrice to the European Cup semi-finals. In 1979, they also made it to the UEFA Cup final, where they were defeated narrowly 2-1 on aggregate by German side Borussia Mönchengladbach. If we delve way back into the history books, they actually had some more success. Silverware in the Metropa Cup. The Metropa Cup, also known as the Central European Cup, was one of the first international major European football cups for club sites, and Red Star Belgrade won it twice defeating Czech opposition in both finals in 1958 and 1968. The history of Red Star must not be understated. Current financial circumstances make it nearly impossible for them to reach the top heights of European football once more. But they are no strangers to the big time. The club was founded as late as 1945 in Belgrade. It has since become one of the Balkan region's most popular and widely supported clubs. The club has also won 24 Serbian Cups, and in terms of their fan base, Red Star Belgrade has one of the most passionate and loyal followings in all of Eastern Europe. Their supporters are known for their intense and unwavering support, both at home and away. The club's home stadium, the Rajko Mitic Stadium, also known as the Marikana, has a capacity of over 55,000 spectators and is regularly sold out for the important games. The atmosphere is hostile and loud, very, very loud. In 1991 came the biggest triumph in Red Star Belgrade's history and undoubtedly the biggest achievement in Serbian football history as they were crowned champions of Europe, defeating French side Marseille in Bari in the final. On May the 29th, 1991, the Serbs wrote their names into the history books, or the Yugoslavians as they were at the time. In fact, one Romanian player was the only non-Yugoslavian in the whole Red Star Belgrade squad. Over 50,000 people attended the final at the Stadio San Nicola, where Red Star would don their famous red and white stripes. The game ended in a nil-nil draw after extra time, and Red Star Belgrade won the penalty shootout against the French side 5-3. Marseille had some quality players, with the likes of Chris Waddle and Jean-Pierre Papon in their side. But on the day, the boys from Belgrade managed to keep them quiet. Red Star had arrived in Italy unusually early, on the previous Thursday in fact, almost a full week ahead of the final, the team set up base camp in a town called Monopoli, 40 kilometers southeast of Bari. They spent the week in relative isolation at the facility, training and preparing for the biggest game of their lives. The club wanted its players to be focused on the task at hand, not least because many of their young stars were being linked with big clubs across Europe. Players spent the week almost in COVID style quarantine, they weren't allowed to see family or receive calls, a far cry from today's world of social media, but a tactic that did not prohibit Belgrade from becoming champions in the end. The victory was a historic achievement for Red Star, as they became the first club from Yugoslavia to win the cup. It was also a remarkable accomplishment for the team, as they had to navigate a difficult path just to reach the final. Belgrade faced Grasshopper Club Zurich of Switzerland in the first round. They would progress with a 5-2 aggregate victory they could actually only manage a 1-1 draw in the first leg, but a convincing 4-1 victory in the second surely did the job. Red Star Belgrade were drawn against Scottish champions Rangers in the second round. 
After a 3-0 win at home in the first leg, a 1-1 away draw was a fine result. They would bounce through to the next round with this 4-1 win on aggregate. In the quarterfinals, Red Star Belgrade faced Dinamo Dresden of East Germany. Now the boys from Belgrade seem to be hitting form, knocking Dresden for six, the perfect pair of victories, 3-0 in each leg. In the semi-finals, Red Star would face undoubtedly the biggest test on their road to the final. Bayern Munich lay in wait. A fantastic 2-1 away win in the first leg gave Red Star just enough of an advantage and in the home leg a 2-2 draw would be enough to survive. Nearly 80,000 attended the historic game in Belgrade and thanks to a last minute equaliser they would party long into the night celebrating their place in the final. Throughout the campaign, Red Star were led by captain Dragan Stojkovic. The midfield maestro was the heartbeat of the team, providing creativity, leadership and vision. He played a pivotal role in the team's success throughout. The team was coached by Lupko Petrovic, who is still revered by Red Star Belgrade fans for his role in their European Cup triumph. Red Star were the second Eastern European side to lift the trophy, after Stoja Bucharest of Romania of course. They were also the only Yugoslavian club to win the tournament, as shortly after Europe would see the breakup of Yugoslavia. The European Cup was also the last season to feature a team from East Germany since the East and West reunified in October 1990. Historic names like Liverpool and Ajax were both banned from the tournament that season for different reasons involving fans. But on the pitch, Red Star took full advantage. The Balkan region, however, would face hard times in the following years. This is one of the many reasons why Red Star have not since returned to such heights in European football. Also cited for their downfall is political instability in the club and the country, corruption and of course a lack of foreign investment that would soon benefit many clubs in Western Europe. The transition to a market economy in the post-Soviet era was a difficult and complex process that posed significant challenges for so many Eastern European countries. Financially, they are still lagging way behind the West and they also felt the huge effects of conflict. So football wasn't a top priority in Belgrade for a few years after their win. Recently, Red Star have continued to participate in European club competitions regularly, but have not been able to replicate their success in the Champions League. Nowadays, to make it out of the Champions League group stage would be seen as a massive success, as the playing field is no longer even. In fact, it's more likely to see Red Star in the Europa League knockout stages than the Champions League. This tells the tale of financial and therefore footballing disparity in Europe. We are well used to seeing fantastic Serbian and Eastern European footballers in Europe's top teams, but sadly many of them never get the chance to develop with the likes of Red Star as they are transferred at such a young age, keeping their clubs afloat financially but well away from European glory. Red Star might never win the European Cup again, it's likely they won't even come close, but they are one of an elite group of 22 and giants of Eastern Europe. Their triumph in 1991 was one of the most incredible in the competition's history. As we close the chapter on the remarkable story of Red Star, join us in our next episode in this series, where we'll explore the captivating tale of another unforgettable underdog. Prepare to be enthralled as we dive into the meteoric rise and unforgettable achievements of a German powerhouse that captured the hearts of football fans around the globe. Stay tuned for the next instalment in our ongoing series on the European Cup. Let us know in the comments below who you think the next underdog might be.